Okay. So in today's notes, we are going to measure segments. We're not uh, going to get out a ruler uh, to measure the segments, and also, too, when we talk about um, angles later on, which I believe is Wednesday or next class, Thursday for you guys, we're not going to get out a protractor either. Okay, we're going to learn three formulas today. Two are distance formulas and one's midpoint. So as I said before, if you want to create that index card for that quarterly assessment as we go, just let me know. They're always up here. But these are formulas you're going to want to put on that index card to use on that quarterly assessment um, because you'll need them for that assessment as well as the first quiz. Okay? So in geometry, there are specific facts and definitions that we assume to be true without proof. So we're not going to prove everything this year. And those are your axioms or postulates. So the first postulate is the ruler postulate. Now, the ruler postulate says that the points on a line can be matched one to one with the real number. So think about your number line last year, and maybe when you were graphing inequalities. Okay, every point can be matched one to one. And the distance between any horizontal or vertical segment has a different formula than that of a slanted segment is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates. So right now, we're not going to use that formula. So it's saying the length of AB is equal to the absolute value of something, and CD is equal to the absolute value of something, the difference of your either X values or Y values depending on the segment. Okay, when you write the two letters as shown, so as AB or CD, and there is no line over the top or line segment, that's referring to length. Okay, so symbols say a lot in geometry. Right now, I just want you to count the squares. How long is segment AB? How long is CD? And then I also want you to note the coordinates for A, B, C, and D. We can write them right next to the points. When you count the squares for AB, you should get 5, okay? And any horizontal segment, what values are the same? Well, it's easy to spot when you actually write down the coordinates. Yeah, the Y values are the same. So we look over here in this horizontal segment, we have negative 5, 3, 0, 3. So we have run, but we have no rise, if you think of slope. So it says here, by definition, it, the length is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates. Well, since the y values are the same, if we were sub to subtract, we'd get 0. But if we subtract um, the x coordinates, so let's actually write the formula, x2 minus x1, we get um, 0 minus a negative 5 which is the absolute value of negative 5, which is indeed 5. On the vertical segment, now that we've written the uh, coordinates, we can see that the x values are the same. So if I want to find the length, I have to find the difference in these y coordinates. So negative 6 minus 1, and the distance can never be negative, that's why we see the absolute value symbols. This is going to be um, the absolute value of negative 7, which is 7. So we're actually subtracting here y2 minus y1. Now, I want you to highlight that we only need to use this ruler postulate for proofs. We're going to get to coordinate geometry proofs, uh, not for another two units before we start some coordinate geometry proofs. And you only need to show the formula and utilize a formula with a proof. Okay, you can go ahead and count the squares. So I would count the squares. If it was a short answer on a worksheet, you could utilize this formula. But if you have any graph where you can count the squares, just count the squares. Okay. 
Below, before the segment addition postulate, it says that when three points are collinear, you can say that one point is between the other. So to the right, A, B, and D are collinear. A, B, and C are not. So we can say that B is between A and D, where C is not. Okay, they have to be collinear. Segment addition. Okay, it gives you an idea. We're going to be adding segments. It's pretty easy. So if B is between A and C, so let's put A here, let's put C here, and we'll put B there. So it's between. It's collinear with A and C. All it's saying is that segment AB, so let's say segment AB was 2, and if segment BC was 5, then what is the total length from A to C? Okay? It's just sum of the parts equals the whole. It's really basic. So if you look at that first uh, example, I'm going to give you a minute to come up with the equation that we would use to find length MP. In order to find length MP, which is the length of the whole segment, we need to know why. So what would be the equation that we would write in order to solve for y to then therefore substitute in to find length MP? idea here. So we have the, the whole length. So the whole length from m to p algebraically is 5y plus 9. So the whole 5y plus 9 equals the sum of the parts. So the two parts, one is mn, which is 17, and the other part is np, uh, which is 3y. So the whole equals the sum of the two parts. At the high school, we are okay with you guys not showing all of the inverse operations to solve an equation. So what I mean is, to solve for y, if I subtract 3y from 5y, we get 2y, and that would cancel out on the right side. Subtract the 9 from 17, and we get 8. Divide by 2, whoops, and y is 4. So I'm okay with that work there. That's enough for me. If you need to go and still do all the inverse operations, then absolutely do so. So if y is 4, then back to my picture, well, I can plug it in here and then add 17, but I'm just going to do 5 times 4 plus 9. And then 20 plus 9 mp is 29. So down below is a definition of congruency. So it's saying that line segments that have the same length are congruent segments. So line segments that have the same length are called congruent. So let's label these segments um, AB and CD. To note congruent segments in a picture or in a diagram, you put the same number of dash marks. It can be one on each, it can be two on each, three on each, so on and so forth. The big thing is, is in your explanations, it's the segments that are congruent. So segment, so in symbols, segment AB is congruent to segment CD. If you're going to use the term equal or equivalence, we're talking about length. So the lengths are equal. And again, length is the letters with no line or line segment over the top. Number two on the back. It says line segment JK has coordinates uh, J, negative 3, 4, and K, 2, 4. So if you picture that, left 3 up 4, 2, right 2 up 4, is that a horizontal or vertical segment? Horizontal. And then L is right 1 up 3, and M is right 1 down 2. So that's going to be vertical. Determine if they're congruent. Well. By definition, if they're congruent, they must have the same length. So here is um, length JK. 
and then we'll find length um, ML or LM is the same thing. So because I don't have a grid to count the squares, let's practice using that formula. So I like to circle those coordinates that are different, so I know that's what I'm subtracting. So JK is the absolute value of the difference of 2 minus negative 3, which is the absolute value of 5, and then again the x values are the same so I'm going to circle the y coordinates and then um, lm or ml is equal to the absolute value of negative 2 minus 3. The order in which you subtract doesn't matter because you're taking the absolute value. So negative 2 minus 3 is the absolute value of negative 5 which is 5. So determine whether they are congruent. I'm going to say that jk and LM are congruent. What's nice about geometry as well is that you can replace any word with a symbol if possible. Okay, so congruent symbol is there. Explain. I'm going to say since the length of JK and LM are equal. So now we're going to change the way this segment uh, is drawn. It's no longer horizontal or vertical. It's going to be slanted. So we're going to derive this formula. As I said, it's not just the what in geometry, but the why. Okay. It says we're going to derive it using the Pythagorean theorem. Now, because we're coming up with a formula, we're not going to look at the coordinates of number or numerically. We're going to do it algebraically. So let's say A is x1, y1, and B is x2, y2. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's have you write that down right underneath. What is the Pythagorean theorem? And two, what do we need in order to use the Pythagorean theorem? When do we use it? What type of triangle? A right triangle. So let's make a right triangle. We could have, I could have drawn it up and over, but let's go left to right and then up. And then we'll call this point C. So the Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus b squared equals c squared, or leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And actually, let's not call this c because of the Pythagorean theorem. Let's call it um, p. Sorry, w is fine. Let's call it p. With the person next to you, I want you to come up with the coordinates for point p algebraically. What would they be? It's either going to be an x1, x2, y1, or y2. So if you're watching the video, pause it and write down the coordinates, and then unpause it to continue. So point P, algebraically, is x2, y1. So let's take a look at what our A equals, for instance. What our B equals, our A is this length right here. So that length, you can see they have the same x value, is going to be y2 minus y1. That's your rise. Of your, think of your slope formula, rise over run. And then here, our b, because they share the same y value, is going to be equal to x2 minus x1, or your run. So I'm going to write that over here. Our A is y2 minus y1, and our B is x2 minus x1. What's the C equivalent to? Remember, we're trying to derive distance D. So distance D is actually length AB, right? So our C is the D. This is what we're trying to find. So if we substitute it in the Pythagorean theorem, a squared would be 
y2 minus y1 squared. And then if I substitute b, which is x2 minus x1 squared equals b squared. Once again, we're deriving what d is, or the distance. So the opposite of squaring is taking the square root. So if I take the square root of this side, it gets rid of the square, and then I take the square root of this side. So d equals the square root of y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared. Now because it's the sum of these two squares, Okay, you can uh, get rid of your exponents of 2. The inverse doesn't cancel those out like it does for the d square. And you guys know from algebra 1 that anytime you take the square root, you have how many roots for solutions? 2 plus and minus. However, can distance ever be negative measurement? No. Um, so we reject the negative. And here's our formula. With the formula, you don't ever include the plus or minus. So the distance formula is d equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now I realize over on the right side, we had the y2 minus y1 squared first, which is fine. That is mathematically OK. You can do it that way. But the formula, if you look it up online in the reference sheet, will have the x2 minus x1 squared. But addition is commutative, right? You can change the order and still get the same answer. So let's, uh, in doing my notes yesterday, I didn't like the order. Let's have you skip to question four. Because that's the direct application of the distance formula. So let's go to four. So flip the page. Read question four. We're given two points on which we have to find the length. Length is distance. So we're going to utilize. So why don't you see if you can write that down? Can you, without looking up here, I think from memory, can you write it down? So in finding the distance between these two points, again, length is distance. I like to circle the x's so that I know I'm subtracting those, and then I know I'm subtracting the y's that are not circled. So plugging it into the formula says I need to first subtract those two x values. So it's 2 minus negative 2 squared. And then I need to subtract the two y values, which is negative 2 minus 3 squared. 2 minus a negative 2 is? No. Nope. 4. And then we're going to square 4. 4 squared is 16. Negative 2 minus 3 is a negative 5. And a negative 5 squared is 25. So now I'm going to find the sum of those two squares, 16 and 25, to get 41. Now the answer says, or the question says, to leave our answer in simplest radical form, bless you, does 41 have a perfect square factor? No, so that's our answer. Okay. So that's using the distance formula. So if we go back to midpoint, so the definition of midpoint was uh, where we left off underneath the distance formula on that last page. And it makes a lot of sense, midpoint. So it's a point that's in the middle of two other points. So if I look at segment AB, the midpoint would be right here, M. And it says the midpoint of a segment is a point that divides the segment into two congruent segments. So AM is congruent to uh, BM. Okay. Now a bisector 
A segment bisector can be a midpoint. If you bisect something, you divide it also into two congruent parts. So it can be a point, a ray, a line, line segment, or a plane. So let's put midpoint M over here. And I'm actually just going to sketch a bisector that's going to be a line. So this line, if, as long as it goes through the midpoint, and we'll label it PQ, again, AM congruent to BM, I'm just going to note that PQ, line PQ bisects segment AM. So go ahead, flip the page, and look at number three. Let's see if you can draw the picture that goes with that question. Uh, one way to be really successful at the end of the year come Regents time, and on any assessment actually, so come Monday for your first quiz, if you take the time to draw the pictures, underline keywords, and highlight, uh, you'll do much better than if you just went through and visualized it on your head. So we need... So it says we have segment JL and K is the midpoint. The length of JL algebraically is 4x minus 2, but the length of JK we know is 7. Find x, find KL, and find JL. Well, we can actually, we should know KL right now. Before, we don't even have to find x. Who can tell me the length of KL if M is a midpoint of JL? Yeah, 7. So because it's a midpoint, JK is congruent to LK. So this is 7. We know that right away. So KL equals 7. And numerically, we can actually find JL, the distance all the way across right now, because we have the two parts. So the sum of those two parts, 7 plus 7, we have JL is 14. The only thing we have left to do is to find X. Well, since the whole is given to me right here algebraically, if I set 4x minus 2 equal to 14, we've got our answer. So add 2, divide by 4. 14 plus 2 is 16, divide by 4, x is 4. Midpoint. This is the last formula uh, and it for notes for today. Midpoint is another formula. Uh, I'm going to give you some small numbers to work with. What is the middle number between uh, 2 and 6? Yeah, 4. What's the middle number between 1 and 11? Six. What's the middle number of um, three and let's do eleven again? Eleven. Three and eleven. Seven. How are we quickly getting that? Some of you. Add them up. Divide by two, which is called an average, right? So if you want the middle number or the middle, we find the average. The midpoint is in the middle of two points, whether it's a horizontal or vertical segment. So here they are algebraically again, and let's put an M here for midpoint again. This point down below, right, is going to be right in the middle of X1 and X2. So you would add them together and divide by 2. This point over here, this Y value is between Y1 and Y2, so you would also add those together and divide by 2. So the midpoint formula, if I use midpoint M, the midpoint's a point, so we need our parentheses for the coordinates, is x1 plus x2 over 2 to find the x, and then y1 plus y2 over 2 to find y. So look at 5. That's a midpoint question, just given the coordinates. So take a minute to average the x's and average your y's, and we'll get the midpoint of segment CD. Now, calm the assessment, you could always graph 
the points, and if a point doesn't look to be in the middle, you can get rid of it. So if you also to spend the time graphing on scrap graph paper, you can easily maybe determine your answer. So as I said with the distance, I like to circle the x's. So the midpoint would be negative 2 plus 4 over 2. So we're going to average. And then negative 1 plus 2 over 2 which gives us the point, negative 2 plus 4 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, divided by 2 is 1 half. And write the fraction, if you would, and not the decimal. The very last question of the day is an endpoint question. So not only might you be asked to find what the midpoint is, you may be asked what an endpoint is given a midpoint and um, an endpoint. There are two methods. You want to know the easy way or the hard way? Easy. I'm going to show you both, but I'll show you the easy first. So method two is the easy way, and that's simply just using a picture. So let's draw the picture. What do they tell us the coordinates are? So they give us A of 2, 2, and midpoint M, which is 4, negative 3. We're trying to find the coordinates of B. So if you draw a picture, all you do is take a look. Remember, this 4 is in the middle of this x value and this x value. So if you take a look um, and count, to go from a 2 to a 4, you must have moved 2 units right or added 2. So then if you add 2 here, 4 plus 2 is 6. To go on the y-axis from a 2 down to a negative 3, you must have subtracted 5. So if we subtract 5 again, because it has to be equidistant, negative 3 minus uh, 5 is a negative 8. So B has the coordinate 6, negative 8. Now, I say the harder way, but it's not necessarily uh, that difficult. It's just a bit more challenging or more work. The way you would set it up up here is utilizing the formula. You would say the midpoint, which is 4, negative 3, equals, and you would substitute what you know into the formula, okay? So we already substituted in the coordinates of the midpoint. We know, so I'm going to write out the formula, okay? We know one endpoint is 2, 2. So you just have to plug it in from one of the x's and one of the y's. So 2, 2, keeping the rest of the formula the same. because you're trying to find that other x and y that you averaged. From here, you would set up two equations, okay? One equation is going to come from here. So we know that when I do 2 plus x over 2, we get this x value of 4. And then the y's, we know that when we add 2 plus y and average it out, we get a negative 3. And all you have to do is solve those two equations. So if we multiply both sides by 2, to cancel out the 2's, we have 2 plus x equals 8. Do the opposite of adding 2 or subtract 2, we get that x is 6. Is that what we got down below? Yeah. And then over here, multiply or solve this equation by 2. We end up with y plus 2 equals negative 6. Subtract the 2, and we get y equals negative 8. So for b, we just found the x-coordinate of 6, y-coordinate of negative 8. 